Halloween Horror Nights has unfortunately come and gone, bringing us the longest HHN yet with 48 Nights of Terror, a slew of big name properties such as Chucky, Stranger Things, and The Last of Us, and the debut of a brand new event icon with Dr. Oddfellow. And now that it's been some time since the event has officially ended, I think it is the perfect opportunity to talk about my final thoughts on the event, and of course, ranking all of the haunted houses and scare zones for this year. We got a lot to dive into with 10 haunted houses and 5 scare zones, but first I want to say that, spoiler alert, I enjoyed everything offered at the event. So even if I rank something near the bottom of any given list, that doesn't mean it's bad, because I felt this year was so strong that even my number 10 or number 5 could be near the middle or top of another year's list. That being said, I also want to express that these are my opinions. I'm ranking these subjectively, and I want you to give me your rankings and the reasoning why in the comments below. So without further ado, let's talk one more time about HHN 32. Now it seems natural to start with the haunted houses. They are the main attraction. So with that being said, let's dive right in with number 10 being The Last of Us. Now I wouldn't consider myself to be a huge Last of Us fan, but I felt like with my limited knowledge of the property, both with the game and the show, they did a pretty good job bringing this world to life. I love how specific set pieces really pull from that Pittsburgh section of the video game, and I love how we got to see these different environments with the infected, who looked absolutely phenomenal. However, what really holds this back for me is just the lack of Joel and Ellie. A lot of the success of the game comes from the interaction between those two, and the fact that we never even got to see them physically together at any point in this haunted house made this one not click with me as much as others. While this has all the components for a good haunted house with solid scares and impressive sets, it just doesn't flow in a way that felt super memorable to me, even though it was relatively enjoyable. So that's why Last of Us is sitting at the bottom of the list at number 10. Moving up to number 9, we have one that's really going to ruffle some feathers, and that is Blood Moon Dark Offerings. Now, scenically speaking, this house is absolutely gorgeous. From that great facade to the town square midsection to all of the interior set pieces, this village feels not only lived in, but super intimate in a way that works. I also feel like story-wise, this house has a very distinct tone and mood as you watch the sacrifice grow more intense as you move forward. The biggest setback for me with this house is just kind of how subtle it is. It's very subtle with its storytelling, but also with its scares. There are great scares here, and in this house as well as the other ones, the actors kill it as usual. However, I feel like the scares just didn't hit me as hard as they did in the other houses. I also think this is kind of where my subjective opinion is coming in, because the rest of the lineup is so strong to me that I just enjoy those other houses more than I enjoy Blood Moon. It's a great, moody, human horror story, and in many other years, it could appear at the middle or even at the top. However, for this year, it's here at my number 9 spot. Now, moving from one fan favorite to another, my number 8 spot is going to go to Yeti Campground Kills. I love how this house keeps a lot of the campiness that made that original Yeti house so beloved, yet expanding on it with really creative scares and really fun and well-designed set pieces. I also love how we get more with the human characters, building up this story and adding some really funny quips and dialogue, including one line that you'll be very familiar with if you did the 2019 house. And scare-wise, we get some of the same ridiculous moments that we did back in 2019, but done with a more modern lens, which works as a sequel to that original house. As I kind of alluded to, Yeti is a house sequel done right, and a really fun time in general. It did win House of the Year after all. I just felt that for me, it was a perfectly solid time, but not one I would jump to get in line for every single night I was at the event. Now while I enjoyed those bottom three, but didn't really connect with them, these next set of houses were really hard to rank because I enjoyed them all for very different reasons. So leading us into this next section of houses, we go to number 7, which is Stranger Things 4. Stranger Things 4 was the house I did most frequently for Stay and Scream, and it led to me getting a lot of runs in on this one, which really made me enjoy it a lot more. I think this house really works in bringing you into the world of this property with its small-scale intimate scenes. Both trailer scenes, everything involving one's transformation into Vecna, Robin and Lucas's moments, all of these very small scale scenes really work to put you right there. And I think even though there are a couple good scares, that's what you really want from a house like this. At least that's what I really want from a house like this. I think the biggest setback for me would be that those large scale sets just don't hit the mark the same that the smaller scale ones do. 
Regardless though, I feel like as a fan of Stranger Things, I got the moments I really wanted to see in here, and the vibe was there, which really made me want to do it every single night that I could. Moving up to number 6 is a house I wish I had done more than I actually did, and this one's gonna shock some people, but for number 6, I'm gonna put Chucky Ultimate Kill Count. Is it cheesy? Yeah. Is it kinda simple set-wise? Yeah. But as a Chucky fan, I just really dug this new take on the franchise at HHN. I loved how the story was not only tied into the new series but also Chucky's past while also doing its own thing. It felt like Chucky's presence and aesthetic was all over this house and I absolutely loved it, including all of the Chucky puppets and animatronics, those were absolutely phenomenal. I was worried we'd maybe get a couple of them in here, but no, they are absolutely everywhere, which was really great to see and had me smiling every single time. And that's what I will say, this house is the fun house for me this year. I just can't help going in here with a big grin on my face and just laughing at the ridiculousness, both intentional and unintentional. Is this house perfect? No. I do feel like they could have done it better, maybe with a different location similar to how they did it in Hollywood, as the Fast and Furious queue is really the biggest limitation to this house in my opinion. But I can't deny that every single time I went through this one, it got better and better, the scares got better, and I had more and more fun with it, so Chucky is sitting pretty comfortably at number 6. Making our way to the top half of the list, we have the surprise of the year for me, the Exorcist Believer taking the number 5 spot. Now I'm gonna be honest, honest with you, for a good chunk of the event, this was sitting near the bottom. I enjoyed it, but it just felt like one that was good, but not like a standout absolute favorite that I would want to go through every single night. However, on my last few walkthroughs, I was very impressed by how much energy these characters had. The scares are key in this haunted house. I'd say it was for sure the most consistently scary one this year. Whether it's the scrim in the hospital, Angela swinging around the door, or Catherine in the chair during the exorcism, I felt like there was so much scare variety in here that it stands out for that alone. However, this house uses all of its sensory details, even the disgusting smells, to create the atmosphere. The opening scene is maybe my favorite cold open of this year just due to the music, the lighting, again, the smell, that really worked to boost that immersion. Overall, The Exorcist Believer is probably my most improved house of the year, one that scared the soul out of my body on more than one occasion, and one that I'm happy to include in my top five. Now, while those three houses were really great standout IP houses for this year, these next four are honestly the big four. The four I'm going to take with me beyond this year and look back on longing to go through them again. And kicking off that collection at number four, we have Universal. Universal Monsters Unmasked. I feel that this house does so much with its setting and characters to create a truly moody atmosphere, from the rainy facade to the Paris Opera House to the sewers and streets of the city itself, there's so much set variety here that works to give each monster a big moment. While this house is very phantom heavy, everybody has a big scare room or set piece moment that adds to that setting and ambiance to create something truly gothic and I absolutely love that. I love how each monster scares in a way that's consistent with their personality and like Exorcist, each of these scares blend in so well with the set pieces to create moments that feel unique and subversive. I've talked a lot about this house already, but you know I'm a sucker for the classic monsters, and I will say this might be my favorite monsters house yet. Moving into the top three, we have my pick for the big scenic house of the year, Dueling Dragons Choose Thy Fate. From multiple large-scale facades to incredible lighting and fog effects, the sets here carry a distinct energy even on runs where there weren't that many actors. I really love the nosedive into fantasy that they took with this house, leaning into wild character design and a D&D campaign style narration from Merlin himself. I love the warlocks, how they interacted with each other, and how each of them had distinct approaches to scaring. I know a lot of people will say there weren't enough dragons, and while I would have loved to see more dragons, I really enjoyed how they pulled off the transformation aspect of this story. And I can't talk about this house without mentioning all of the easter eggs, such as details pulled directly from the original IOA attraction, and of course the Choose Thy Fate ending, which made this house very rewalkable. Building a haunted house based on a defunct original theme park attraction is a very ridiculous concept for Halloween Horror Nights, and I'm happy to say that for me at least, Dueling Dragons Choose Thy Fate panned out to be one of my absolute favorites of this year. Now I say I had a pretty hard time putting the rest of this list together, but really these two are neck and neck. They shift every single time I think about them. These two, the sprung tents of this year, were the absolute winners of Halloween Horror Nights when it comes to houses, and at number two, we gotta put 
The Darkest Deal. What can I say about The Darkest Deal that hasn't been said already? One of the best stories told at HHN period. Definitely my favorite story that was told in any of the original houses for this year, and one that's excellently told through fantastic set pieces with lots of great variety and some of the most aggressive scares I've seen at this year's event. I love the smells in here. I love the music in here. I love the quotes in here. Everything about this house feels like it was intentional, and it makes it a perfect haunted house experience. I think this is an absolute 10 out of 10. This was the last house I did at Halloween Horror Nights. We closed closed this house down and that last run was honestly so electric the energy was through the roof and all of the actors were giving it their all like i said they all give it their all every single night but especially that final night especially that final run the darkest deal is an absolute treasure for halloween horror nights this year and like i said very often goes from number two to number one depending when i think about it shoot maybe even when i put this video out it might be my number one but right now as i'm recording this this is my number two to the darkest deal. So what's number one? Well, it is Dr. Oddfellow's Twisted Origins. As someone who's been following the story of Dr. Oddfellow since they initially really teased it way back when they put that static video out and everybody was speculating Dr. Oddfellow to the announcements, to seeing him at the event itself, all the podcasts, all the little bits of lore hidden throughout the park, all built up to this incredible icon house that paid tribute to the past of Halloween Horror Nights with great Easter eggs and nods to characters like Jack and gave us a platform for Dr. Oddfellow to exist and for us to get a real feel of what this guy is about. Obviously, we got to see him at the event. I'll talk about that when we talk about Scare Zones, but getting to see him in his own icon house and getting to see his twisted oddities was so phenomenal. I feel like this is so distinct from any other circus house they've had. Obviously, circus houses are something that Halloween Horror Nights has done before, and I loved that. It felt like a dirty, dingy carnival. This isn't the same kind of fantastic carnival that you might see in past Halloween Horror Nights houses. This is tight. This is in your face. I can't pick a favorite scene because every scene is my favorite scene. This house just gives me a certain feeling. It's a certain atmosphere. And on my final run of this house, it was basically me with no one in front of me, just walking through and observing all the scares, taking it all in for one last time. And it was a great way to end off this haunted house, a very magical experience for me. And honestly, this is a house that I consider to be more than just a haunted house. It's a world I wanted to go back into every single night of the event. I did this one pretty much every single night I was there, if not multiple times. So yeah, Dr. Oddfellow's Twisted Origins is a perfect icon house. It's a fantastic carnival house. It is a great sprung tent house, and it is my favorite house of Halloween Horror Nights 32. So we talked about haunted houses. Let's talk about some of the scare zones as well. Coming in at number five, when it comes to scare zones, I'm going to put Shipyard 32 Horrors Unhinged. While I'm not someone who normally hates on these sort of throwback scare zones where they bring a lot of old characters back, I really like that concept. I did enjoy Hellblock Horror last year. I felt like the story here and the connection to Dr. Oddfellow was kind of hard to put together. And I did enjoy getting to see characters like the Tooth Fairies. Of course, Patricia, who was the star of the show, and my favorite, the Scolder, that came out of that crate with the Scram. I absolutely love that character. But sort of a tangential connection to Dr. Oddfellow's story line and the fact that this scare zone like many other San Francisco scare zones was absolutely packed every single night of the event just made this one one I didn't really want to hang out in super long I wanted to kind of get through to get to the back of the park or to the front of the park I did enjoy this one the characters that it brought forward but it just wasn't my favorite scare zone of this year moving up to number four we have the Hollywood scare zone Dark Zodiac I think this one really shines in its character designs. All of the Zodiacs look absolutely wild and I love it. I'm a Capricorn, but my favorite costume was probably the Gemini. I love the sort of swiveling head feature. And I love how every Zodiac kind of interacted with each other differently and with the chainsaws in this zone. This was the big chainsaw zone of the year. I want to say my one big gripe with the Dark Zodiac scare zone was just because it's in Hollywood. That's one of the bigger scare zone locations. And I feel like set wise, there wasn't a whole lot going on. And 
I feel like they could have added a few more set pieces. I really love the sort of stages that they have uh, there, and I just wanted to see more of them. But regardless, I didn't think I'd really enjoy the Dark Zodiac Scare Zone, but I really grew to enjoy it and liked hanging out in there from time to time. Moving up from Hollywood to the main entrance plaza in a brand new location, we have number three being Dr. Oddfellow's Collection of Horror. I love how Dr. Oddfellow is wandering around in this scare zone, going up on the stage, making fun of people, poking at people, talking to people, taking photos with people. It feels like an icon scare zone. I wish he would have had like a signature kill moment. Uh, you did get some cool water effects from time to time and he would sort of interact with the dead body behind him. But I just love the fact that Dr. Oddfellow is walking around here. I felt like this scare zone, whether it was because of the fact that it didn't really have a whole lot of people in it at any given time or just because of the new location, it felt very open. It felt way more open than the Minion Land scare zone used to be. But yeah, I felt like this was a good primer into the feel of this year's event. So if you didn't really like the feel of the event, you probably wouldn't like this scare zone, but I enjoyed the feel of this year's event. So I did really enjoy the scare zone and I stopped to watch every Odd Fellow show that I could. Now moving up to number two, we have a lot of people's favorite scare zone of this year, and that is going to be Vamp 69 Summer of Blood. This scare zone honestly has been all over the place for me. At first, I really wasn't a huge fan of it, but as I spent more time in it later on in the run, I got to see what made it so special. You have these great interactions between the characters, between the different vamps, whether it's the hippie vamps or the blood slayer vamps, and of course the victims. You had a great soundtrack, lots of fun lighting and fog effects, and just a really groovy atmosphere throughout New York. And I think that's the best part about the scare zone. Is it the absolute scariest scare zone of this year? No, but I felt like this scare zone really used its area to create a great atmosphere and was one of the ones that was the easiest to just sit and chill and watch the characters go and do their thing. It was a thing that I did quite a bit during this season. So I guess it's something that led to me having a bigger attachment to the scare zone. But my number one scare zone has to be the Central Park scare zone for this year and that is Jungle of Doom Expedition Horror. What can I say about the scare zone that hasn't already been said? As we were watching this thing get built, we were ogling at the set dressing and the set dressing looks even better at night. The costumes are absolutely wild. They completely transformed from day to night. They're very vivid during the day. They have all these crazy colors, but then at night they really blend into the background to get those great scares. The odd fellow moment where he collects the skull was probably my favorite moment of the year in any of the scare zones. And I just love all the little effects like the bat eyes in the trees and the fog and the lighting and the bodies everywhere. The Central Park scare zones are always super beautiful, but this one I think is a completely different vibe yet still fits in that same level of quality delivered in the Central Park scare zones. So overall, what did I think of Halloween Horror Nights 32? Well, it's really hard to put that in a video. Honestly, I've been having a really rough time time in my personal life during the events of Halloween Horror Nights 32. It kind of explains why I haven't been going as hard with the videos as I was before the event started. But this year, I felt like this event was just something that really helped me. It was something I really got to look forward to. I looked forward to going to HHN every time I could and just sitting in the scare zones, going through the houses and just feeling safe and feeling comfortable at the event. And I know that's something that a lot of you feel when it comes to Halloween Horror Nights. I know it's something that makes the event so popular. I understand why people love this event so much. Getting to see things like Dueling Dragons and Dr. Oddfellow and the Phantom of the Opera in a Haunted House is absolutely fantastic, but getting to see my friends, getting to take my family to the event and guide them around with all the HHN knowledge I share with you all on this channel, getting to see friends in the haunted houses themselves and getting those really personal scare moments just really makes it something special. It makes this event something special, and I feel like this year in particular, it really clicked with me. I used to be very passive with Halloween Horror Nights. I go to the events, I enjoy some houses, I would rate things subjectively, but this year I felt such a connection to the event and the people making it work that I can't really explain. And a part of that comes from making these videos. And I just want to thank you all for watching these Halloween Horror Nights videos from the beginning where we were talking about what IPs could be coming to this year to now where we're talking about final thoughts and house rankings. Your support 
is truly something that I can't express into words how much it means to me and how much it has helped me. While people can judge HHN objectively, can say this is the best house, this is the worst house, this is the best event year, this is the worst event year. It means something a lot more to me. It's my favorite time of the year. It's something I look forward to. It's a way of escapism for me and it helped me a lot this year in particular. So I will say I enjoyed HHN 32 and it was, it was a great time. So I want to thank you all for watching this final HHN video. Thank you again, just for watching all the videos. And uh, if you're new to the channel, hello. Um, I'm not usually this emotional in every video, but I'm gonna do talk about HHN and theme park updates, news, history, lore, all that stuff like that. So if you like that, you like this video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you. As I mentioned before, let me know in the comments what you think about this year's event. Any favorites food wise, houses, scare zones, merch, whatever you wanna let me know. Let's start a discussion down in the comments below. This is, I believe, my last HHN 32 video, which is very sad but it's okay because only a couple more months and we're gonna start talking about HHN 33 for next year. So if you wanna be here for that, again, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. I love you all so much. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. I feel the power of the glowing skull of souls surging through my veins and giving me what I so crave. Immortality! Ha 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 ha!